Meanwhile, uh, there is news today about FutureLearn, the uh, MOOC platform uh, based in the UK. It, it looks like uh, it's going to be sold completely to global university systems. Uh, so Seek Group from Australia and the Open University are both going to stop investing in it. I, th I think Seek Group is still investing in Coursera. Uh, now, what, is, what has all this um, business pages stuff got to do with theatre or drama? Uh, well, partly, I've become interested in this in this uh, MOOC scene because it seems to me it's 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 a it's a brilliant way of spreading out knowledge, making it widely available. It's an extension of the internet and universities academics don't um don't always support it some some see ed tech as a threat to civilization and so forth so i've i've got into various plays about this one of which is a cd walk or when i say play a sort of a way of representing a discussion so walking around Exeter looking where the record shops used to be and asking the question why is so much student accommodation still needed why is it still being built what might be going on with learning that's that's a good basis of a walk I think and so CD walk can exist either as a, a an actual walk or the basis of a documentary or as um, a verbatim or a sort of built a script yeah a script at a later stage so that's one one play that i've i've done that relates to this and it relates to the um current conference the representing the past visioning the future conference because um one of the, one of the videos that you you can find uh online that uh, jesse jesse scott well, you find it as J, J. Scott has done is about VHS, VHS shops uh, in Melbourne, and that is is not it's not exactly like the the, the CD walk that I've done for, shown for Exeter as part of my own my own video, and you can find it separately. Um, but I've I've e emailed her, and she she can see that there's there's an over overlap of ideas there somewhere and there's a lot going on in Melbourne around students international students who had to go online during the during the lockdown and are now in various stages of working with it or around it or thinking about options so the the, the aspect of um Education moving online is is part of an architecture event. I think at some point there's going to be a discussion about budgets, how much of it is spent on buildings and how much of it is spent on media of various kinds, and the the designers are going to be in the middle of that somehow. So I think I think that's at least in background, and the the other thing to say about the. Um, about the about the plays, the other plays that I've done. Hang on, hang on just a minute. Uh, the, the the plays that I've done are, are about um, ruins, um, based at, based at uh, Kendall Kendall Castle. Um, follow on from a lecture given by Peter Horrocks in, in Durham, but a while ago now, three or four years ago. Uh, when FutureLearn was being launched and he was putting a lot of money in, into it, or quite substantial sums anyway, enough to get criticism from the Open University and a lot of people on Twitter and um, The Guardian and all kinds of people thought he was a bit out of, out of proportion. Um, but he spoke about the Fortress University as a way of describing existing universities and he saw the MOOC and online as ways of, of breaking that down. So I think now I'm, I've, I've used various hashtags 
as the basis of plays. I mean, the, the, they can all of these things can eventually become a script, um, but uh, it has to say the the siege has failed. So if if you if you've been following the idea of a, a siege of Kendall Castle as as if it was an existing fortress university. Um, as it, as it happens, the, the the one in Kendall is definitely a ruin. Uh, I don't know about the ones in in Durham. I haven't I haven't visited there, but the the one in Lancaster is a, is a functioning castle. So that would be the the set for whenever it was. All these things are out of time. Uh, so Siege K, the siege has failed. The pe the people who are raving on on the edges about the marketing and the technology. Um, have given up more or less because the UK campus has gone back to normal uh, let's say I don't think there's many signs of continuing interest or investment in supporting online all of that happens more or less improvised by by the staff who just had to do something um, that's that's a that's that's a guess if people know know differently to that it would be very interesting to hear. Um, but what I noticed, the, the um, Cape, Cape Peninsula University of Technology, who I think are tomorrow, they're, they're sort of headlining or doing the keynote for tomorrow's talks. Uh, sorry, I've got to get... But, but because um, different microphones aren't working, I, I'm, I'm not close enough to the... the uh, the screen. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, the so it's talking about the lockdown, and then and the the consequence it has for public space. Uh, these environments void of human interaction. was subject to a substantial amount of visual representation. In some instances, these representations reinstated the spectator, the photographer or filmmaker's gaze of architectural and natural space and place. And in others, they brought about the question of the fetishization of abandoned space and ruination. Uh, that's, in, that's in the public description of what the conference is going to be about so I'm looking I'm looking forward to that um, I, de I definitely think ruination came up as a theme during the lockdown but just imagined uh, but then again the, the amount of building that has been invested in uh, compared to the investment in something like FutureLearn over the last 10 years or so, let's say, when the MOOC started. Um, the other, the other um, video that I, that I think, think is in, in, interesting... Uh, hang, hang, on, hang on just a minute. Yeah, M. M. Ashmore. If you look for uh, representing pasts, M. Ashmore on on YouTube, that's mostly about Gen Z and the music industry and um, what TikTok, um, way Fortnite for concerts. Um, you can see the, the sort of sorts of things there, and by implication. The, stu the, the, the Gen Z students. Um, well, there's a lot. There's a lot about music there, and my, my basic idea is looking what's happened with with m digital on music, and um, guessing that something similar will happen with learning. But what the time scale is and what the sequence is, no, no, no nobody really knows. It's just a sort of um, related conversation somewhere else sort of thing, um, but. One of the things in there that is just a remark is about immersive theatre. So one, one of the, I, I'm, I'm just hoping at some point we'll find out more about that, because 
I don't I don't think the the drama the theatre that I, that I come across in the southwest southwest of England um, is doing a lot about immersive theatre. It's, it's still very keen on uh, real real spaces, live audiences. Uh, there's very little sampling, remix, digital versions of scripts or performance. Re- relatively speaking, so I'm I'm hoping the immersive theatre bit will 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 pop up at some late, later point. Uh, 